All right, so you're going to be looking at discrete data versus continuous data, and that all sounds pretty fancy and interesting and high level, so congratulations. That's awesome and exciting. So um, thinking about discrete data, here, here's how I would define it in a nutshell. It's data whose units are only meaningful at certain points. And maybe it would help if I just visualize it. So if, if you were to plot discrete data or visualize discrete data it would it would look it would look like this and discrete kind of means separated or a, away from the others so these are little points of data that aren't touching each other okay they're they're separated off okay or or maybe I could you know the opposite of discrete data would be continuous data this is what continuous data would look like just an an infinite number of points of data you know, along along the line. So discrete data, uh, it's by itself. It only makes sense on uh, at certain points. And I'll give you some examples. But what? So I, so I say discrete data is separated by chasms. It's kind of it's kind of sad. I mean, they're like, hello, where are you? I'm all the way over here. It's re it's really not that bad. Okay, so here's some examples um, of discrete data or non-continuous data. Um, how many people love dinosaurs? Well, you can only have whole numbers there. I mean, maybe it's three people, maybe it's a billion people, but you're never going to have 5.182 people who love dinosaurs. Okay, so th the number of people who love dinosaurs can only take on certain values. Th that, that only makes sense at certain points. So, um, at you know, maybe maybe it's something like s five billion people love dinosaurs. I hope I hope that's true. I hope nearly everyone loves dinosaurs. But you're never gonna have like you know one point seven five people love dinosaurs. That just doesn't. That's a value that doesn't make sense for this unit. Um, people people would be the unit. You're counting people. Another example would be the size of your shoe. Uh, you can have a shoe size that's 11 or 11.5 or 6, but you can't have a shoe size that's um, 3,000.18 or something like that. Or you know, you can't have a shoe size that's one quarter, at least not you know, not that I'm aware of. So there's there's values that only make sense in in at certain points. Okay. Another example of discrete data would be the names of your classmates. Uh, no one's gonna be named um, Susie one two eight seven five. There's only a certain number of names in the world, and any kind of hypothetical made-up names like combinations of letters and numbers and stuff, you know, they're just not gonna exist. So that'd be an example of discrete data. Some non-examples would be something like your height. If you're measuring height. Um, you could be five feet tall or four feet tall, uh, but you could also be, you know, 5.01 feet tall or 5.012367 feet tall. All those things make sense for height. You know, you don't have to be exactly five feet or exactly four feet. Same thing with maybe how far you ran. Maybe you ran 10 miles. Maybe you ran 9.897 miles, and you're just rounding it up to 10. Okay. Uh, maybe you ran 5.76890001 miles. Any of those values would make sense if you're measuring the distance you ran. 